Hey everybody, this is Nick with Frost CNC, and this is part two of our blind corner with a flush inset blind panel, and that's what it looks like. So part two will take you through the stretcher, the partition, and how to get your hinge locations. Let's do it. All right, so this is part two of the flush inset blind panel uh, cabinet videos. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, and if you like the content, we're gonna be doing a lot of it. So let's pick up where we left off. Uh, we kind of showed how we got to this point in part one. So go watch that if you're unfamiliar. Uh, but one thing I wanna do before we move forward is I wanna check the overlay uh, of my door and drawer to my blind panel. So I'm gonna go to the front view I'm going to go to wire and I'm going to put a dimension on here. Let's see what this overlay is. And now you can see this is essentially 11 16 And really what I want is 5 8 And so this is one of the only times that I'm going to go to the face tab. I'm actually going to adjust, uh, sorry, adjust the drawer and door size right here. Now, I've done this in several other videos where I've told you to avoid this. There are certain instances where you can't. Uh, and this is one of them. So in order to get the, the overlay that I want, this is really the only option. So I essentially took a 16th uh, out of the right side of both of these fronts. And you can see now them uh, should be uh, five base. And we'll just throw a dimension quick. There we go. So that's what I'm after. So we're good there. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show how to add a stretcher. We're going to show how to hinge the door with a blind panel hinge. And then ultimately we'll actually add a shelf inside as well. Uh, or if you were using a corner unit like a Le Mans or something like that, you could add machining for that. And we'll actually show Le Mans in another video uh, coming up. So let's add the stretcher. <clears throat> so this one's a little tricky. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually modify my partition. To get ready for the stretcher. So if I take the back off, you can see my partition is lined up here with the reveal, but really what I want that to be is another 3 8 down or half the stretcher width so that when I center a stretcher on this reveal, it actually meets perfectly with this partition. <clears throat> and so we're going to do that actually right here on the parts tab and we're going to edit that would be the length of the partition from its current state. So if I go to part L here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make it bigger by half of the stretcher thickness. Now you're going to see it's going to grow in the wrong direction and we're going to fix that position right now. Go to part 3D position. You can see it's got a native number in here. And we're going to change that. Really, our new position is going to be height of cabinet. We're going to minus the frameless reveal for the uh, top. And then we're going to use something called frameless top drawer height. And that's the parameter that sets the size of your frameless uh, drawer front here on top. And so that gets us down essentially to the bottom of the drawer front. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down by half of the reveal between the cabinets, uh, between the fronts, excuse me. And then from there, half of the stretcher thickness that we just did. Now this one gets a little long, but that right there is going to make sure that this partition is perfectly placed every time. So press OK. And there we go. We're back to a quarter inch uh, partition dado up here. And we're back to lined up. You can see how we're going to fit perfectly now once we put a stretcher uh, centered on this reveal line. While we're adjusting this partition, we actually have to adjust it in the width direction too. You can see it's actually poking through the front here. Once we inset this panel, we did not move this partition back uh, either. So let's do that. That would be a width adjustment. And what I'm going to do is change it from its current width by going part W 
And we're going to shorten that by the thickness of this, this inset panel, which is finished exterior thickness. Here we go. But you can see again, it took it off the wrong side of the part. And we're going to move it back, front to back, by the finished exterior thickness. And there we go. We're back flush with the back of the cabinet. And you can see now our part sits nicely on the back of the blind panel and does not poke through the front anymore. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our partition set up for a stretcher. So to add the stretcher, we're gonna go back to the interior tab. I'm gonna click in this opening up here. If you click down here, it will not work. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a horizontal split and we're gonna call it a stretcher. We're gonna head and go center on reveal like that. And what we should see, boom, perfect. I even got a dado here, I've got my screw hole and it's centered on the reveal. And everything we've done so far, we haven't shown this yet, but it should be fully parametric. So if I go here to the face, I make this door bigger, everything moves over, and we're good. Cool. So let's hinge the door. I'm going to go here to the parameters tab, and we're going to actually need to make a parameter here called hinge bore distance. And we'll go hinge bore distance from top, bottom of door. And here you're gonna have to put your own value, whatever you set your hinge machine to. Three, three and a half, four, we'll do four for this. <clears throat> and we actually need to put this machining in the back of the uh, panel. So I'm gonna go to the parts tab. I'm gonna go to panel. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to operations. Now what I'm looking at here actually is the face of the panel and what I need is the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and flip the shape and this edge right here is actually the edge right here that you see. <clears throat> okay so in order to add my hinge mounting spots I'm actually going to do a line bore and go to quantity 2. Because really what I need is, is two 5mm holes 32mm apart, which is perfect for the line bore operation at a quantity 2. Now, I'm not, I don't have the hinge specs in front of me, but I know that I need to be 37mm in from the edge. And so our Y position there is going to go to 37. Now, in order to place it uh, in the X direction, I'm going to use that parameter we just made uh, called HBD. And so in the X direction, what I'm going to do here is we're going to go HBD, which is going to pull four inches. Now keep in mind that is to the this location, this hole right here. And so if we want our hinge centered on this split, we actually need to take half of 32 out of that number. So we're going to take 16 millimeters out. And that should get you a hinge truly centered at four inches up on this panel. Now, the thing we didn't factor in right there, and we did that on purpose so I can show this, is our door actually sits down uh, by the thickness of the bottom here. And so we need to factor that math in as well. So let's go to the operations. I'll flip this back over. And we're gonna edit that X position. And so really what we need is for this to actually be down by the thickness of the bottom. And just to make sure that we factor our reveal in, uh, we need to take the uh, reveal out of the bottom as well. Like so. There we go. So now truly relative to the door, we should be four inches relative to the door. Let's do the same thing at the top. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste. Now, this one is a little trickier. For this one, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to uh, take the overall length of the part from here to here. 
we're going to add the thickness of the top. We're then going to subtract the reveal at the top of the cabinet. We're then going to subtract the frameless reveal top drawer height, which gives us the height of that drawer front. We're then going to subtract the reveal between the drawer front and the door. So now we're at the top of the door. Then from there, we're gonna go down by our hinge bore distance, which is four inches. And again, an additional 16 millimeters off because of our uh, 32 millimeter spacing on our plate. We go ahead and press okay. And there it is, looks good. Let's go ahead and press okay. And there they are ready for your blind panel hinge. Now, here's the mistake I wanna make sure that uh, you don't make. So let's say, for instance, you need to change this, this top drawer height. Now, to keep this parametric, we cannot use the face tab. If I click this front and I change this to, we'll just make it extreme so you can see it, to 10, a lot's gonna go wrong with our cabinet. Our partition, is wrong, our hinge locations are wrong, and really the face tab is not a great way to change the size of this front. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna change this back. If we do need to change it, we need to do a parameter override to do so. And really this is good practice all the time. We're gonna go here to doors. I'm gonna go here to the frameless top drawer height. I'm gonna grab that parameter. I'm gonna change that to what I want and you'll notice that uh, our partition moves and our hinge boring moves, but the front hasn't moved yet. In order to get that to happen, we need to go to the face tab, click on that drawer front, and go ahead and uncheck top drawer size and check it again. And it'll re-pull your parameter number here. And now everything's sized great, right? So it's still a fully parametric cabinet. We just have to be careful with how we manipulate it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to normal. And there it is. Now, one other pitfall I just wanna point out quick, and this is new to version 10, is I'm gonna to go to the parts tab here and I'm gonna click on this panel. And there it is. Now, in version 10, we have the option of changing the material right here in the parts tab. And that's all fine and good in a lot of situations. However, when you're making your own parametric models, this actually overrides the parametric nature. So let's say uh, I wanted to change away from three quarter for some reason. We'll just do a quarter to show what the, uh, essentially what happens here. You're gonna see that our model doesn't work anymore, right? Even though we did everything parametrically, this essentially is overriding the parametric nature of it. And so in order to change this, you still have to go back and change your material template uh, to do it. So again, I would hesitate to use this uh, in your own uh, custom models. So we'll just go back to three quarter plywood. There we are. All right, at this point, I would go ahead and rename this item to what you want to and go ahead and save to library. And you've got a great parametric blind corner cabinet. We'll see you at the next video.